Jermaine Johnson ranked 158 out of the exactly 200 players who were eligible as in had enough snaps in pass rush win rate. That's a very good stat and does translate very well to guys going on to the next level. It's kind of, a, I think, a good example of don't just pay attention to box score stats, but advanced stats tend to be really good because Johnson does have a good amount of sacks, but his actual rep by rep situation it leaves some to be desired. He is what I would consider a developmental player, at least in the pass rush game. His run defense is better, but that's kind of how I feel about him and why I am lower on him than most. So we're going to get into some film. We're going to talk about that. But that's a big thing and I think a big red flag. Guys who you know have low pass rush win rates tend to be good NFL uh, pass rushers. You know, for his his pass rush win rate wouldn't be great for an NFL player. So you're expecting him to all of a sudden perform better at the NFL level. Some guys do that, but not everyone does, and more don't than do, which is just why I have some clear reservations with a guy like Johnson. Going over to the film, like there are some good plays with Johnson. Again, I'm not trying to sit here and say there's nothing I liked with Jermaine Johnson. In fact, I started off his, you know, my film study just by kind of watching some highlights, getting a feel for him, and I was like, oh my god, this guy looks awesome. Uh, the issue is just the, the consistency. But like, there is some good stuff, and this play is an example of it. Where what's going to happen on this play? He's going up one on one against the right tackle here, and watch him really just blow by that right tackle, and he is going to be able to create this pressure. I mean, that's a good play, right? I mean, you want to be able to get immediate pressure and that's what he did now I would sit here and say I don't typically love guys who rely on speed too much that's something that I always do feel about just because not it's not like a personal preference or anything it's just that at the NFL level you know th that those become harder and guys who rely on speed a bit too much at the college level they don't always end up having success at the NFL level but that's not all he does that's not how you know, his only wins happen. Like, for example, this play, where what's going to happen on this one is he's going to be on the other side of the field going up against the right tackle uh, still, though, because it just, you know, everything is flipped. Uh, so that's how that works. But you see where he is on the field and watch what's going to happen. Right when this play begins, what you're going to notice is the hands. So you see how to tackle. I mean, what do I always say about offensive linemen? Listen, there's guys who can give you better intricate details about O-line than me. But the basic takeaway with all this stuff when it comes to tackles is if you're a right tackle, your right hand is the most important aspect of the play. And for an edge rusher, if you can get that right hand away from the position you want it to be, that's how how you can win. Johnson is going to be able to knock that hand away and get over and created some pressure. He didn't get the sack there, but he did create some pressure. So like there's legit ways Johnson can win. And there's a very real chance Johnson does end up being successful. Now, another issue with him, though, is something like this that I really saw on tape. He does kind of cheat a little bit when it comes to the pass rush. And what I mean by that is he'll get caught several times trying to rush the passer on running plays, which happens to everybody. It is what it is. But it seems like it happens to him more than it happens to your average edge rusher. As you see, he is going to very much, you know, give up a big running lane there. And again, it was a draw. So like it, this one, you kind of understand. Maybe this is a bad example because it was the draw. But, you know, I showed it because it was an extreme example, but maybe that's unfair. I did notice this just in general, though. Again, I don't everything I say, everything I bring up in these videos. Yes, I'm only showing one example, but I would never bring it up if I only saw one example. Or if I did, I would mention I only saw the one example. Going over here now, it does seem like a lot of Johnson's wins came from something like this, where you see where he is on the field. This time it's the, you know, where I got the film from that circled uh, him. So that's why the circle looks different there. But anyways, watch how he's going to try and win with speed. And it's kind of just a weird play because, you know, there's uh, help sort of towards the outside there, which seems like the tackle was aware of. Just kind of a weird play. But basically the main reason why I'm bringing it up is because at this point, it's really, you know, okay, whatever. You're in this situation. Johnson is going to do a good job of chasing down Sam Howell and making the tackle there. And you could view that in two different ways. The first of which, and, you know, if you're a fan of Johnson, what you're going to be saying is that, oh, no, that was a great play by Jermaine Johnson. He had a high motor and was able to come over and still make the play. And, and that's true. I mean, you do want, you'd rather have a guy who can have a high motor and make that play than a guy who can't make that play. But my issue is when it seems like a large percentage of your sacks and pressures came from stuff like that, that's where I start to pump the brakes and get a little bit concerned and say, I don't know if you're maybe as good as your box score stats might tell you you are. 
there's also something like this, where what's going to happen on this play, I mean, this is just, he's going up one-on-one -on -one against a tight end, not even a tackle here. And I do look at this stuff. I like to sit here and say, okay, if you're supposed to be the guy, if you're someone who, I mean, I have seen mock drafts put Johnson with a top five pick. However, watch how to tackle is certainly going to win this rep and win it pretty decently. So, I mean, again, I get it. Everyone loses some, some plays. They do. There's no denying it. You're not going to win uh, every play. My big concern with Johnson is not that he got beat by a tight end once. It's that he just gets beat more often than he wins. He's not consistent enough. Again, that's not to say that he can't succeed or that he won't succeed. I mean, listen, if every NFL scout is saying, no, this guy is going to be awesome and I'm the one who isn't, then I'm probably wrong. But I do think that these numbers do, they do a good job of just indicating who's going to be a good pass rusher at the next level. They do. Production does matter. That's a very real thing. I, in certain positions, I should say, because I know some people will say, oh, what about quarterback? Uh, yeah, it doesn't matter with quarterbacks. It does matter with edge rushers. So that's why I harp on it so much. All I want is what's the best way to predict how these guys can be successful in an edge rusher positions. The best way to predict it is with production, with, you know, uh, cornerback. It seems to be 40 time, right? It changes depending on position. And I want to be very clear I'm not saying you should not draft Jermaine Johnson at all. I, I mean, I have an early second round grade on him, which is a lot lower than most people do, but it's still not like super low. Actually, I think it might be a mid second round grade, but regardless, uh, I have a, you know, a second round grade on him, which that's a valuable pick. And the reason for it is because he does have a lot of stuff going for him. He is very fast. He is very, very long and at times can look like a very talented player, but I guess the question becomes, well, if you have all this stuff, why weren't you able to make it work in college? What are you going to do to make it easier for yourself at the NFL level when you weren't able to do that in, at the college level? Now, again, like I said, I don't really talk about his run defense as much. His run defense is solid. I still don't think even that is spectacular. And quite frankly, uh, you know, it seems like the best pass rushers tend to be good uh, run defenders as well. Uh, so I, I kind of feel like, uh, you know, draft a guy who's the best pass rusher. You want someone who can do both is what I would say. But uh, if you're just drafting him to be a run defender and you don't care about his pass rush, okay, fine. But I don't think that's how teams view him. His pro football focus grade for uh, run defense, if you like that, uh, was 31st in the in not in the NFL, in the NCAA last year. So that's better. It's still not like amazing, but that's like a good grade and definitely, you know, you're a good college player. Uh, but again, it's also not like you're uh, Aiden Hutchinson out there, even in the run. But that's what I think about all this. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. What are your thoughts on all of this? Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.